Hi everyone. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to KimLive.tv where we will bring to you industry leaders who can help you grow your business. I'm so excited, excited today because just for you, I have Lana and Lana, you're going to have to correct me or tell us how to pronounce your last name when you're introducing yourself. She's from LinkedIn and she represents the small and medium businesses from the standpoint of marketing. And I am excited to have her because she's going to share about a really great new tool that they have available to small business owners. And she's going to give you some tips about marketing. So Lana, go ahead, introduce yourself, please. Sure. So my name is Lana Cavinson, and I'm a group product marketing manager at LinkedIn. And um, as mentioned, I focus on the small business segment. So I'm so excited to be here with you guys today talk about LinkedIn and how all small businesses can and should be taking advantage of the platform. That's awesome. Right. Okay, so let's get into a few tips about growing visibility with social media. What are some things that you would suggest small business owners do to uh, use social media to grow their visibility? Sure. So I think at the most basic level, Given how prevalent social media is today, every small business really has to have a presence on the key social media platforms, LinkedIn, of course, being one of them. Um, just to take a step back from that, I think it's also important when you build your presence to think about the different reasons that people use different social platforms. So for LinkedIn, we're a professional platform. We're a place where people go to do business. So it's a really great place for a small business for your personal profile, so that's your brand and you're representing yourself as well as your small business. And then for your business through a company page, it's so important to represent yourself through both of those so people can find you and engage with you. You know, you, you said one of my keywords, engage. <laughs> so, because, okay, this is a pet peeve of mine businesses who do nothing but push information out and not engage. What are some of the things that um, that businesses or especially small businesses can do to engage people on social media? Sure. Um, there's a couple of really key and simple things they can do. First of all, they can post updates off of their personal profile. And so those updates don't have to be um, unique content all the time, which I know can feel a little intimidating, but it can also be an article that they read that they think that their network or their industry or community or potential customers will find interesting. Because one of the things that's so important as a small business in particular is to stand out as an industry expert, the person who is on top of the trends for whatever it is that you're offering. In the same way, you have a company page and as you're building out your follower community you should absolutely be posting updates there too and through both of those as people like comment and share those updates you start getting that viral reach and so you start building a conversation or engaging with the audience you're trying to reach and then the third one um, equally is groups groups is a little more work because it's a dialogue back and forth what you don't want to do is post something there and then just walk away from it. You want to be part of that discussion. So if people start writing and commenting, you want to be able to write back. But that's really where the relationship building happens. And even if you're not talking to the exact person that is your prospective customer, their network will see that conversation. And, and that's where really the power is because it's not just about who you know, it's about who they know. Ooh. Can you say that again? It's not it's not what? <laughs> <laughs> so it's so what people sometimes say to me is, oh well I only have fifty people in my network or oh I only have twenty five followers. But it's not just about who you know. It's not about just your direct network. It's mm -hmm. also about their networks. And that's where you really get that viral reach and how you can get discovered. Oh, I love it. There's something that I created I want to share with the, the viewers just to kind of give them an idea of uh, one thing that I would love for you to talk about, and you may have mentioned it, and it's called 
uh, the company pages. Using LinkedIn as part of your social media marketing will allow you to build a company page on LinkedIn. You can then use the page to engage with your target customers and share targeted content. And I've shared links where they can actually go and learn more about building company pages and also where they can go and uh, set up the con company page for, on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. Can you give us some, some specific details that can help them use this LinkedIn company page to reach their target customers? Sure, absolutely. So that's exactly what the company page is for. So the first thing you'll want to do with your company page is build out your presence. And you'll want to add a robust image. You'll want to write a description of what your business is, what your specialties and expertise are. And one of the things to call out there is as people do searches on LinkedIn, you want to have in your description the search terms that you want to be found for. So very much like Google, you want to have those key terms that you know people are using when they're searching for a solution that you're providing. And then you want to start having a targeted conversation. You want to start posting updates on a daily basis that share out, again, those thought leadership, those industry best practices, those, hey, I just read this article which I know will be so relevant to my customers or prospective customers. And you want to encourage the engagement. And as you grow that engagement, your follower base will grow. And that's really the community and the way that you can target your customers or prospective customers. You build up that follower base. You start engaging and talking to them. You help them to help you spread the word. And that's how you grow um, in terms of viral reach. Ooh, loving it, loving it, loving it. Mm -hmm. ah! Uh, because that's really great information. Now, there are some people who may say, okay, you say company pages. And and this is a question that did come into me. What type of businesses, organizations, or who, who actually can build a company page? Sure. So a company page can be built by anyone. The only caveat is that you need to have a unique domain. So... For security reasons, LinkedIn doesn't let you create a company page using Gmail, Yahoo, Hotmail, any free um, email providers. You have to have a company. So for me, it's at LinkedIn. So I can create a company page as long as I have at LinkedIn at the end of my email. And the reason we do that is we don't want people to create any kind of false information out there. And so this reduces the ability for spamming. So it, it again goes back to we very much pride ourselves on the members and the content that's being distributed by our members, whether they be businesses or individuals. And so we do have uh, safe locks like that to make sure that the information that's being shared is, is valid. So that's the only caveat. But otherwise, you can go right ahead and create one, and it's super easy. You go to linkedin.com backslash companies, and then you can just go right ahead and create one. It takes just a few minutes. Okay. Woo! All of this great information is being brought to you by, once again, Lana, who is a marketing product, product marketing manager uh, for some, uh, that advocates for small businesses and medium-sized businesses and I really want you to listen to her and the advice she's giving because it's really really great for you so we have talked about company pages we have talked about growing visibility reaching target customers this is something that I <laughs> really want to encourage and that is building your business brand so that you can encourage loyalty from your target customers and I want to spend a lot of time on this because a lot of businesses don't realize that just because you set up a profile on social media everybody come you know like saying you build it they'll come not <laughs> no no what are some simple tips that you would suggest to businesses uh, that would help them build their brand to encourage loyalty from their target customers. Yep. Um, so one of the things that we touched on, and 
Kim, I think you have a great story about this when it comes to search terms. Mm -hmm. So you definitely want to build a brand and really focus on the search terms that people would be using to find you or whatever it is that you're offering. And you want to make sure to have those search terms in your personal profile as well as um, within your company page. And when you think about your personal profile and company page, it's actually more than just the description section or the specialty section. It's also incorporating where it feels natural, for sure, don't force it, but where it feels natural, incorporating those terms in the updates that you're posting. Because those updates are also, we use the term crawled, but those updates are also crawled. And that means that we're looking through those updates for those search terms. And Google is as well, by the way. So something else to point out as you're building your brand is building your brand on LinkedIn isn't just about being found when someone is on LinkedIn and they're looking and they find you. But Google also is searching LinkedIn. So when someone says, and I'm totally just making up a very simple situation, but when someone says, I'm searching for the best widget maker of all time, and they type that into Google, if you have created a really robust profile and if you've created a really robust company page and posted updates, that have widgets in them and talk about your specialization in widgets, then that will also bubble up when people do Google searches as well. I'm loving that. Mm -hmm. and, and you mentioned something that I actually, uh, <laughs> my story, I, I've shared this a number of times and I love sharing this story because it shows you the power of social media. I, I have chosen to position myself on different social media websites as a WordPress trainer, social media coach, things along that line, you know, specific keywords. And on LinkedIn, I optimize, and this is something I suggest to people to do, optimize your profile for your with your keywords. And so I optimize my profiles and uh, on LinkedIn, Google+, Plus, Facebook, Twitter, all over. And on LinkedIn, I was found by Steelcase. Steelcase, for those of you who don't know, is a Fortune, I believe, Fortune 500 company that's one of the top manufacturers of office furniture, educational furniture, hospital furniture. If you've used a file cabinet, desk, chair, something along that line, you, it may have been a Steelcase product you use. And, and so this big, huge company found me on LinkedIn. And then they did a Google search, and I came up on Google search for the terms they were searching for. That was three years ago. Now I'm entering into my third year with them in uh, providing them a service that uh, that's a five-figure contract. And I'm loving it. Why? Because I optimize my profile on LinkedIn. I optimize my profile on other social media networks too. If you're not optimizing your profile, you're missing out on an opportunity to build your brand. Mm -hmm. so. Absolutely. And then, and if I could say one other place to really, for LinkedIn specific, of course, one other place to really focus on building out your brand is groups as well. So I wouldn't say join a million groups, that's not realistic, but find the couple of groups that have um, a good size reach, so have a lot of members, a group that is really relevant to your industry or your specialization, and more importantly, groups where prospective customers would be spending time, and start building your brand there too. Start sharing content, start um, engaging in the discussions, and what will happen as well is then people will start listening to you, relying on you, trusting um, your expertise, and then they'll go follow the original path of, well, let me check out that person's profile, and let me check out their company page. And so it just further grows your brand on the network and outside of the network. Um, I, I love that. And, and we're getting questions already that I'm going to pose to you during the Q&A in sure. about five, ten minutes. But for now, what I want to do is uh, encourage people, if you have questions, please feel free to uh, leave them in a comment or use the Q&A option if you're watching live. 
If you're not watching live, you can still post a comment and it will be answered. So, <laughs> so we're building our brand loyalty. We're growing our visibility. We are connecting with and engaging, not just connecting, but engaging our target customers. Where, what else is there? What else is there for us to do? Sure. Um, so these are all, everything that I've mentioned are the free things that you can and should be doing on LinkedIn. And one other free thing that I definitely want to talk about that um, is just fascinating to me that um, it's not talked about as much as it should be is advanced have an amazing search capability on LinkedIn way beyond just the standard search box that people see when they're on their home page. I believe it's to the right of the search box, you'll see this text that says advanced search. If you click on that, it opens up a ton of different filters through which you can be searching on. So you can be searching on company name, job functions, seniority, um, years of service, geography, and it lets you start identifying your prospective customers. Before doing that, you have to think about, well, who is my prospective customer? What might they look like? And one of the fun things that I encourage people to do is look around. See if you can find somebody who looks like your ideal customer and see what it is about them that makes them ideal. Or maybe look at a current customer that's just fantastic and is exactly who you want more of and see what they look like, and then search on things that would likely bring more of those types of individuals, like the, the things that make them special, what it would bring them up in search yourself, and then try doing searches on that. And that's where we go back to, it's not just about your network, it's about who they know as well, because what LinkedIn will let you do is, um, based on if you're on a subscription or not, you can search and see who in your network matches that criteria, who in their network matches their, that criteria, and then if you have one of our subscription offerings, you can even go to what we call the third degree, so who in that third degree of network matches your criteria, and it allows you to engage with those exact prospective customers that you want to reach. So that's another thing I would absolutely encourage everyone to do but it does require a little bit of homework. You have to think about who is it exactly that you want to be talking to. And then the other thing I would do along the lines of being really targeted is sponsored updates. So sponsored updates and LinkedIn ads for that matter um, allow you to target the exact person, the exact audience on LinkedIn that you want to reach. And you can do so through either advertising spots, which are LinkedIn ads, or sponsored updates, which are essentially company updates, updates you posted through your company page, but now you can take those updates and you can actually target them to your exact prospective customer. And what's really unique about LinkedIn is on other social networks, a lot of this targeting is what we call inferred. And that means that based on what you're doing on the network, they, they make assumptions like, oh, based on what Lana's following or what she's liking, She's probably a marketer. Well, on LinkedIn, what makes our network so amazing is people are proactively telling us everything about them and they're keeping on a professional level and they're keeping it all very up to date. And so you're able to target me, for example, because you know I am a marketer, I work in tech, I have 10 plus years of experience, and I'm in California. And you know that because I told LinkedIn that. And so it allows you a really direct line to engage with me. Oh, that is so awesome. You know, I want to go back to something you said. Search is so important. And let me show, show you why I'm talking about that. I am going to share Google search. Now, just so you know, I am not logged in as myself uh, on any Google uh, uh, I'm not logged in as Kim Beasley. I am logged in um, as my Kim Live TV. So when I did a search for Kansas City, Missouri, which is where I'm located, Google Plus Business Coach, which is one of the things that I want to be known as, look at the first three results. They're from LinkedIn. And then you see me. That's my Google Plus profile. Notice this, when I click on media consultant, who's there? Me. 
when I click on web developer, who's there? Me, and I happen to be the top one. Once again, when I click on business consultant, who's there? Me. <laughs> <laughs> so not only are you able to set up your profile so that you can come up in search engine results, you can also set up your profile uh, search in the results on LinkedIn, but as you're optimizing your profile on LinkedIn, you're optimizing it for Google also. And the same thing for Google Plus. And the reason why I said that is because we have a, a question from Roxanne Davenport. Hi Roxanne, thanks for watching. And she asked this, I have a profile page and already share what I post on Google Plus with LinkedIn profile page. Will it be smart to copy my Google Plus business page to LinkedIn, then post on that page? Well, let's use let's be careful of how we use the term copy. Should you have a company page on LinkedIn in addition to your Google Plus page? Absolutely. And it's a very, very simple reason. Because you want as much reach as possible. Those products are free to you. And as a small business with limited time and resources, you want to be in every channel possible. Because what you don't know is if I, for example, am someone who visits Google Plus a lot, or I'm someone who visits LinkedIn a lot. But yet, I'm your prospective customer. I'm the one you're trying to reach. And so why wouldn't you ensure that you have a presence in any of those, in each of those locations, so you can get the greatest amount of reach and visibility? Now, copy is the only word I would be cautious of because, again, keep in mind, different social networks attract different mindset. And we've done a study on this. Um, it was done about a year ago, but it's very relevant. It says people come to different social networks with different things in mind. And so you want to customize your presence for that mindset that people are coming in with so that you can grab their attention and draw them in to engage with you. Awesome. Thank you. And we have one thing that I want to make sure that you mention and that you talk about. And I'll share my screen so that people can see. LinkedIn has a new business resource, smallbusiness.linkedin.com. Woo! Yay! Just <laughs> can you share a little bit about that, uh, smallbusiness.linkedin.com? Sure. So. Um, we did a lot of research over the last couple of quarters, and what we found was small businesses were uh, very interested in doing more on LinkedIn, but they really wanted some more information. And so we've been working really hard to create a resource center. And I want to emphasize, this is a resource center. It's free to you. Everything there is free information. There's no um, catch-22 in terms of getting you on there. It is purely for educational purposes. We really, really support the small business community and we want to help them get the most out of LinkedIn. So if you go there, you can learn everything you could possibly imagine on how should I be branding myself on LinkedIn? How should I be marketing on LinkedIn? Are there sales tools that I should be using on LinkedIn? Um, how should I be hiring using LinkedIn? And what's most important is we start off all of those conversations with here are all the free ways that you can be using the LinkedIn platform and tools. Now, if you want to take it a step further, we do talk to you about the products you can purchase. But there is so much that you can do on LinkedIn just for free before you ever give us a penny. Awesome. Oh, wow. You know, guys, we, we're getting close to the end, but I want to open up for questions now. I'm, we have a question from Diana Morgan who happens to be in the Hangout with us. So Diana, go ahead, ask your question. Say hi. <laughs> well, um, I'm a small business owner um, in addition to other things. And um, I mean, what would you suggest that the first thing that a startup business owner would do on LinkedIn? Sure. So the very first thing is absolutely to flush out your personal profile as well as build out your company page. And I know those are two, but really you have to do them both. Mm -hmm. We hear, in this day and age, we hear time and again, and this is just, since I've started LinkedIn, um, this activity has just grown rampantly, is people will meet each other at networking events, at um, conferences, sales functions, whatever it may be, 
they will go back to their office or their desk and they will look at the person they met or look at that card and go onto LinkedIn and look at that person's profile. And then the very next action they do is they click on the company where the person says that they work or the company they own and they'll go to their company page. And so you have to have a presence on both of those, a rich, robust presence. It's critical. It increases a validity. It furthers conversation. It makes people feel like they can continue working with you and start building up whatever that relationship is that you're trying to kick off. Wonderful. Thank you. Do you have any other questions? Um, well, I liked a lot of the, the things that you said about like engage, you know, engaging in with the, the company and really engaging in working. I mean, just it, it's not just you put your stuff out there. It's a you keep going back and it's it's a constant process but I think that it's not a process in the like drudgery sort of set it's more a really being able to communicate with your customers and I think that that really helps to build that relationship where they they trust you and I think that's a very useful tool that LinkedIn is is continually providing in so many ways and I think that this new LinkedIn business stuff will help teach people to to do that. Absolutely. And I, I do want to say, um, I think you said something really interesting right there. That it's not about just putting your information up and forgetting about it. And I do appreciate how time constrained everyone is. But it's something as easy as spending the time that you have your cup of coffee in the morning, spending that on LinkedIn and posting updates and responding to questions and um, getting engaged in a couple of group discussions and looking at what content is bubbling up through our uh, pulse and sharing that out. It's really not that hard, but it is a routine that you have to set for yourself. And time and again, we hear so many success stories. If you invest a little bit of time, you'll get massive rewards for it. So we're, we're almost at the end. Oh my gosh. The time has flown by so quickly, and I, I have so many more questions to ask and want to know so much more. Uh, but at the same time, I want to be cognizant of the time that we agreed to. With that said, what are some last things that you want to share, some last bit of golden nuggets that you want to share, and, and, and also how people can reach you? Sure. Um, so the best way to reach me is through the small business site. Um, I would go there. I do some reading up. Um, if you have any questions, we have a playbook, a small business playbook on the site. And it, on that playbook, there's an email address. So you can feel free to um, email questions there. And I am checking that email account daily. Um, but I would encourage people not to be um, not to put it off. Social media is here, it's here to stay. It is so powerful whether we like it or not, it just is. And so especially as we move into a world where, fun fact, by 2020 50% of the workforce will be Millennials. These are people who only know how to function in a social media world. So I would encourage you to make that investment, take that time, Get yourself in there. The more comfortable you get with the platforms and products, the easier it's going to get for you. And it really is a tremendous way to use very limited time and resources and get really strong leads and generate customers. Yay. And once again, I'm Kim Beasley with KimLive.tv, where we bring you the industry leaders to help you learn more about using social media to grow your visibility, to reach your target customers and to build your brand loyalty. It's been wonderful talking here with Lana and having Diana share the space with us. And unfortunately we gotta say goodbye. But once again, please, if you have questions and you're not and you didn't watch this live and you're watching the recording of this interview, please feel free, leave a comment and we will make sure you get your questions answered. Thanks for now. Bye bye. Bye.